Hi there, I'm Mike, and what I have for you today is Star Wars The Black Series number 63, Grand Moff Tarkin. Finally got my grubby hands on him. Go ahead and check out this picture while I read the bio on the back of the box. An ambitious, ruthless proponent of military power, Wilhuff Tarkin became a favorite of Emperor Palpatine and rose rapidly through the Imperial ranks. Here he is out of the box and I have to say, this thing is stunning. From the moment they announced it, I knew this figure was going to be one of the special ones. And one of the ones that's going to be really hard to find. Because everybody wants a Tarkin for some reason. Now, if for some reason you're watching this and you have no idea who he is, Governor Tarkin, or Grand Moff Tarkin, or Wilhuff Tarkin, as I knew his name was, it's still weird every time I read it. He appeared originally in the very first original Star Wars movie back when it was just called Star Wars and then eventually A New Hope or Episode 4. He was essentially the main bad guy of the movie. He was, arguably so, the one in charge of Darth Vader, making him above Darth Vader. Darth Vader was essentially his lackey. He was the schemer. He was the mastermind. He was the one in charge of the Death Star. He was played by Peter Cushing and the likeness here could not legally be more spot on. I feel like I have a tiny Peter Cushing in my hands. Now, if this were accurate, he actually wouldn't have boots on. Peter Cushing didn't like wearing the boots. He was never shot pretty much from here down. Recently, in the movie Rogue One, he appeared through digital necromancy. Using computers, they recreated a CGI Peter Cushing Grand Moff Tarkin. Depending on who you ask, they either didn't know it was CGI or they could tell the whole time and it looked awful. I've never seen anyone kind of in the middle there. We're just gonna look at this guy and we're just gonna think A New Hope and we're just gonna forget any of the other stuff existed because I just don't want to get into it. But looks wise, they got him spot on. He's wearing his Imperial uniform. He's got all of the necessary things that he needs to be a Grand Moff. He's good. He looks fantastic. So what does he come with? Well, we'll talk first about what he does come with. This is an interrogation droid. It's weird that he comes with it because this in the movie is really more associated with Darth Vader or Princess Leia because the only time you really ever see it is entering the detention center where Princess Leia is being held, but it's cool to have this. Honestly, this is kind of its own droid as it is. I'm glad they're including it as an accessory because I would not want to pay 20 bucks for this. Maybe if Hasbro released like a random droid pack that's like a mouse droid and like a gonk droid and stuff where it's like, I don't know, 30 or 40 bucks, but you get like four little droids in it that you wouldn't want to buy by themselves. That would be cool. Or you could release it as an accessory for a character like this where they are kind of loosely associated, even though I don't think they actually shared any direct scenes together. It is kind of cool. It comes with a clear stand. You can move it around on the joint, but it does unbalance it and it will fall over. So you pretty much want it staying straight up because that's how it was in the movie anyway. It just kind of floated at like chest level, making that weird sound and focusing in on the syringe. And that's it. That's all he comes with. I have to say, first off, I'm a little disappointed he doesn't come with a gun. Now hear me out before you immediately comment in the comments, Grandma Tarkin never used a gun. Yeah. I know. The very first action figure of Grand Moff Tarkin was released in the Power of the Force 2 line. There actually wasn't an original Power of the Force release in the 80s or late 70s. In fact, it was a big deal when they released him in the Power of the Force 2 line. It said, first time ever made on the bubble. And he came with a gun. I think it would have been a nice little nod if they had given him a gun just because of that. Also, he has a hand like he's holding a gun. I know, yeah, he could also just be pointing at things, but he's, his finger is doing this, not this. It's clearly a trigger finger. He should have come with a gun. It's like a two cent thing. They've made a ton of them. They have the mold. They didn't have to paint it. I don't even care if it was painted or not. He should have come with one. On top of that, he should have come with alternate hands, or at least not a hand that makes it clearly looking like he's holding a gun. So I'm a little disappointed. It's not enough to really hurt the score overall on the figure. It's not enough to make me dislike the figure even a little bit. I'm just 
reviewing the figure and those are my thoughts on his accessories. Even though this hand is kind of poised like he could be stroking his chin, he can't actually get his arm up high enough to do so. Which brings us right into the articulation. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. His head moves side to side, forward not very far. It also has a little side to side waggle. His arm moves out this far, all the way around. He has a slightly less than 90 degree bend at the elbow as well as an elbow swivel. He has a wrist swivel as well as a hinge. He has a swivel at the waist. It allows him to move forward not very far and backwards just a little bit. His leg movement is hindered by the shirt tail skirt thing. He moves forward this far, backwards that far. His spread is okay. He has an upper thigh swivel, a double jointed knee, an ankle hinge, as well as an ankle rocker. With this being Tarkin's widest stance with both his feet flat on the ground. So some things I wanna point out. He has the new head joint, which gives him a lot of waggle like this, which the other figures do not have. And I honestly expect that out of every figure from here forward, because while it's a small detail, having that extra little bit of range of movement increases what you can do with the figure tenfold. Little tilts of the head like that give the figure a lot more personality. So if you are posing it, taking pictures, there's just so much more you can do with it now because of that, or it becomes that much more lifelike because of that. Other than that, he's got pretty standard articulation as far as the legs, as far as the feet. They're a little hindered by his skirt, but that's fine. I'm glad he has a skirt because that's what he's supposed to look like. I'm sure if you did have a little mini skirt coming down for, it's not a skirt, it's like the end of his shirt, but it looks like a mini skirt. If he wasn't wearing pants, he'd be looking pretty sexy. My one just real big gripe about this is that arm. There's, they should be able to adjust the articulation so that it can go past that 90 degree arc. For what he's doing, he's mostly just gonna be standing there with his hands behind his back or something like that anyway. But it's just kind of like a little perfect storm of a nitpick because the lack of articulation gives their choice of sculpt of the hand, it lacks the ability to actually go onto his chin to look like he is thinking, which is something he did in the movie. I mean, they just used basically the I'm holding a gun hand to, to do that, but it fails at being able to do that. So not only can he not do that with that hand, just sitting down normally by his side, it looks like he should be holding a gun, but he doesn't have a gun to hold. So it's kind of like mixed all around in there. That one complaint goes everywhere on this figure just a little bit, but again, it's not enough to really hurt the figure overall, but it is a nitpick that I have of the figure. The sculpt though is where this figure is at. He's got lines, he's got fabric folds, each one of his Imperial insignia rank things on his chest are well painted. The little cylinders, pens, I don't know what those are on his chest. Those are well painted. The belt is immaculately painted. The silver belt buckle is immaculately painted. His face is amazing. His pants are creased and puffed down on the side. This figure is a work of art. Despite any little nitpicks I can have about the choices they made, which could have been easily fixed in many simple ways, that still doesn't hurt the overall sculpt they have with this. I'm also going to talk about the sculpt of this little thing because this kind of is a figure also by itself. I will say this does not have any articulation other than the ball joint. It's painted really well. It's sculpted pretty intricately. I will say the appendages are a little blunted. They're a little dulled. In the, in the movie was shiny and this kind of looks dull. So I wish they had gone a little bit extra and given the interrogator droid this kind of shine that the boots have. Other than that, the interrogator droid also looks great. So what about this figure? Did I want it? Heck yeah, I wanted it. As soon as they announced this, I said yes. The availability is okay. He is a highly sought after figure. He's easily the most highly sought after figure in the original solo wave that he debuted in. However, they did repack him in the next wave as well. So hopefully between him being released in two waves, it won't be super hard to find him. I got mine from Hasbro Toy Shop. They happened to have him in stock and they had like a 20% off free shipping coupon. So I said, yeah, that's stupid if I don't do that. I haven't seen him in stores once yet. Obviously I've seen the wave he's in, but he's always just not there 
because scalpers or people just finding him and wanting him and not the other ones. I'm sure it's a combination of both. I'm not gonna really get into a tissy fit over how much I hate scalpers because he's just a highly sought after figure. He is an original trilogy figure, which is always way more wanted than like anything from the newer movies. And Grand Moff Tarkin is a popular character in general, so. He looks great sitting on the shelf. I can't recommend having him enough, especially if you collect original trilogy figures. He is a jewel in the collection so far. Which brings me to my final arbitrary rating of a four and a half out of five. Like I said, I do have some nitpicks on him and those nitpicks are in a couple of different areas. He is high up on my list and I would be absolutely shocked if this figure did not show up high up on the list on my 2018 top 10 Black Series figure video when I make that in January of 2019. Good luck finding him if you're looking for him. I suggest online. That seems to be the easiest way to get him. Amazon, I haven't seen a lot of luck finding him yet, but Hasbro Toy Shop, he comes in and off there. Places like Dorkside Toys and Big Bad Toy Store, Entertainment Earth, probably gonna be your best bet. Although expect a little bit of a wait with those guys. So that's it. That's my review of Grand Muff Tarkin. What did you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Did you agree with me? Did you disagree with me? Did you like it more than I did? Did you like it less than I did? I love to read those. I love to respond. There's a couple of different ways down in the downstairs area that you could support my channel if you want to. Don't feel like you have to. Please do give a like or a dislike or a share or comment. Whatever you feel like doing, it helps the channel out on the YouTube side of things. And that's it. Thanks for getting this far. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you later. Bye.